I've gone through what we're going to do, but that's, that's the running order of the event for the speakers today. And then towards the end, it is opening up in a, into a discussion to try and drive this forward in as much of a communicative way as what we can. So from a strategic perspective, we've recognised as the public sector, we've got a role to play um, with broadband in Cheshire, Warrington and Holton. There's, there's only so far BT and Virgin Media are going to roll this technology out. It's largely focused on the towns, it's largely focused on where they get their economic return from that investment. But that means that the downside to that is the significant portion of Cheshire, Warrington and Holton that isn't scheduled to be in that upgrade. Uh, and that's largely because uh, there isn't, it's not as densely populated and unfortunately, it's lovely areas like this which unfortunately fall into that type of category um, where they don't justify, there isn't justified means or on that kind of return in their minds to make the investment here. So that's where the public sector steps forward and really the mo some of the models we've been looking at is the gap from that investment whereby we raise money ourselves through the public sector to subsidise that investment by the private <coughs> sector. Um, we have chosen to do this in partnership, so it's Cheshire East Council, Cheshire West Council, Holton Council and Warrington Council and the reason we've brought that together is that it actually reduces our cost significantly so we've got one project team addressing this the whole of the area at the time so that makes our cost cheaper but it also gives a, a wider market appeal to the private sector when we take that strategic project forward it, it's no small project uh, we're anticipating that to roll out broadband uh, to as, as far as we can reach um, getting as far to that 100% marker as what we can it's going to be around £40 million, pounds. so that's, it's no significant investment. Um, and that's largely what we've got to actually raise half of that money ourselves with the private sector potentially putting in 50% as well. Some key targets that we've got to do, so we've got to raise uh, that £20 million, pounds. so we don't have that money in our, in our reserves or in our budgets directly from the public sector, so we've got to look at grant funding opportunities to raise that some of that value. We've then got to go out to market, so we've got to go and talk with the, the telecommunications sector to say, we want a new solution, um, we want you to invest in it, and we would like you to, to roll it out for us. Uh, so we have to do that in a competitive in manner, so it's, it's, a, it's a procurement exercise. Then the rollout programme will start, and we'll start to get the infrastructure in. Um, well, that's really the start of the journey. Once the infrastructure starts to become available, that's when we start to explore how we can use that technology and actually understanding what the real advantages are to you and your homes and your businesses. We've also got to seek state aid approval for the investment. So the EU says that any public money that's been invested needs to be sanctioned by them for um, and signed off that we can make that investment with public money. And the reason for that is that public money could be classified as distorting the market competition. So that needs to be signed off as well. So there's it's quite a lot of work to do there, but we're all committed to do that, and this is where the strategic angle plugs into the local aspects as well. So, the government set a, a commitment target of 90% commitment, so they want to see 90% of, um, of the country connected with super fast broadband services by 2015, which is an aggressive schedule, uh, but something which is actually achievable for us in Cheshire and Warrington if we keep the pace moving. We've, we've stretched that target and we want to actually say we want to reach 100% of Cheshire and Warrington. But to do that we need to look at innovative ways and different funding sources to achieve that. So it's about addressing the failure of broadband in areas such as this which are classified as areas of market failure to actually put that infrastructure in. And then looking at how we can take the, um, the infrastructure forward to actually grow the economy and, and actually help us in our everyday lives. We've got a, a very simple business model which has largely stood the test of time for us since we've developed this over 18 months ago. Uh, the left hand side of that is there's a self-explanatory business case for why um, the investment is so important. And then we've got these three parallel tracks to identify the funding, uh, to, to, to go through a procurement exercise and then to get that state aid approval. At the end of that we actually start to roll out of that infrastructure. So simple terms, that's, it's a lot of hard work but it's actually a, a a manageable process of information but that's where the real journey starts for me really um, without actually using this technology when we get it it's just been a worthless investment so we, we've committed as local authorities to look at how we can engage with the communities and with businesses to look at the exploitation of that technology and we've got those six vertical pillars uh, sorry that you've got to turn your head on the side um, 
Well, we've got economic, economic development. Um, we've done a, a value and impact study uh, looking at the investment for the superfast broadband in Cheshire and Warrington and Halton. And that suggests that this could actually drive over a billion pounds worth of, of growth in the economy in the next 15 years and create 11,000 jobs just in digital services. We've got the as aspects of customer access. So um, we're in the time of austerity. Austerity is the new norm. Uh, we need to start looking at how we can reduce our cost as public sector and that means moving more services online, what we call channel shift, and that means more flexibility to access council services and public services when you need them. We've got an environmental angle, so that if people are, are working in their homes or operating a more flexible approach to how they work or starting up their business in a local environment because they've got access to technologies, that might mean that they're commuting less and there's less CO2 productions. If people are staying in their home, if people are running local businesses, that's got to drive something about local communities and, and that sustainability of those, which is so important with the devolution of services, etc. <coughs> Education, learning and skills. There's so much I hear now about people, um, school children, needing to be online to do their homework, to, to send in emails, to submit reports. Uh, I saw a, a BBC report at the weekend that was talking about, uh, I think it was Yale University, offering a, a degree to the masses effectively just by delivering it through online content. So universities and education systems are, are being, moving away from being place specific to being knowledge specific. So you should be able to be at home and take education from wherever you live in the world. And there's health and well-being. Um, we all know that the NHS is in a bit of a dire state at the minute. It's, it's not going to get any better. So there needs to be aspirations of how the NHS changes. There needs to be more of a focus on social care more of a focus on using assistive technologies to keep people in their homes for longer to reduce some of those costs. So all of that integrates right across the public authority business model. Um, so this is a piece of technology, but it's how we use that technology better, which is so important to me. <coughs> I mentioned briefly about the funding model. Uh, we've got some money from BDUK. There's 3.24 million available to Cheshire, Warrington and Halton, which is Sounds quite a lot of money, but it doesn't go very far. We're looking to top up that money with a bid to the European Regional Development Fund, um, which is about justifying a, a, a network for SME small businesses. And we're looking to put in a bid between 13 and 16 million for that. Um, and then coupled with those two funding sources, we take supplier investment. So this is the investment <coughs> PT or another may put into the network when we actually come to roll this out. So you, you weight that side of the model with all the money, but what's so important on the other side of that model is actually the revenue to take those services up. So what they need to be sure of or when they're making the investments in this area is that people are available and want to take up these services and understand how they're going to use them. So that's, that's as important as actually getting the message and getting the money right. So just a bit of an update where we're up to at the moment is that we've, we've submitted our round one bid of our ERDF. So that... that large 16 million <coughs> bid for a business network. Um, we were planning to submit the, the second more detailed bid for September. Uh, last week that got brought forward to June. They wanted to have submissions in much sooner than that. Uh, we secured 430,000 from an RDPE funding source uh, already. So we've got a little bit of money to one side there to help with uh, community projects. Um, we're working with local community on these regional community broadband funds, so this is uh, really what today is about. And we've been given, uh, we've passed our first checkpoint with BDUK, so they put an assurance process around helping projects through. And we're in one of the first waves of moving the projects through in the country. Um, there's up to 40 projects in the country, and we're, I think we're in something like, we're about number 10 out of the 40 or so. So they've, they've approved our local broadband plan, which sets out our strategy and our approach. And they've approved that the local authorities are putting matching investment into this project against their 3.24 million contribution. So the local authorities are putting a similar amount of money into this project to run this, plus additional resources for the project team, etc. So we're looking to take the, um, the next stage on with BDUK. Um, we're about to launch a public consultation. I believe it's gone live today. So that's asking businesses and communities about how they perceive our plans of, of investment. And we're hoping to go out to market with our procurement to select an infrastructure partner at the beginning of July. So really the pace is starting to really ramp up how we move this forward. 
And with that procurement, we get a route to market to deliver some of this matching investment, and we'll also get the link in with our state aid approval, so about the investment of public funds. And we're building a data room as well. So what that data room means is it's a, a, it's a closed, restricted set of information that we're providing the suppliers with on um, certain investment um, criteria, certain amounts of data that will help the private sector make a decision whether they want to invest in this area. The, the thing that you might not be aware of is that BD UK have been developing a procurement framework and what that is, it's a, a, a faster route to market for us to take a procurement. If we had to do this on our own, you have to, you have to follow a, a procedure probably called competitive dialogue that could take 9 to 12 months to do. Um, the framework is an accelerated process that we could move that through in about, in about three months. Um, and they've been shortlisting suppliers on that framework. Um, that hasn't been formally announced yet, but there's only two to three suppliers on that framework and some of the big names that you might recognise uh, who could be on there are Fujitsu and BT. So when we go out to market, we're actually talking to a limited number of suppliers when we want to put our project forward. So the tables have turned perhaps where they were 12 months ago where we were putting forward investment and hoping we'd have the pick in the market. We've now got to actually take our case and make our case as attractive to the private sector as possible because they're picking and choosing where they want to make an investment. So the ideal case for us would be to have competition from more than one provider, more than just BT which is largely the case of what's happened in a number of other projects around the country, to drive down the best value uh, scenario for it. So this is where it's very important to recognise these hardest to reach areas. Um, there is modelling that we have of investment in broadband, and it looks at a, a traditional kind of technology model um, using the telephone infrastructure and an upgrade to that called Fibre to the Cabinet. So that's the model that BT is deploying at the moment. So they replace the copper cables in the ground to your street cabinet, and then your street cabinet stays in the same type of connectivity with the copper lines to, to your home. And from that, you get a much better connection in speed, um, and you can get better products and services on that as well. Um, so based on that theoretical model, we've been able to look at the, the cost of actually rolling this technology out, and it, it's, it's, it's around that £40 million pound mark. And we've got to make an assessment about how, where would we make those investments in the technology and where would the private sector want to make those investments in the technology. And there's some areas where it's very cost prohibitive. So they're the very hardest to reach areas where we need to look, look and be very innovative about how we actually use the technology and what approach we take to it. And to work with the local community to drive forward the case and to say, look, there's a body of people here who want better broadband services and are willing to pitch in to actually support this. Now, unfortunately, the area of South Cheshire as, as, as a whole, this area that you know, where we've come to today has some of the very most cost prohibitive connectivity charges to put this infrastructure in. So it's these areas that we need to be looking at innovative solutions and it's these areas where we need to be actually say, raising the bar to say there's a strong community voice that people want to do something differently down here and broadband matters to these people. So we've got a, a large task to do there to tackle it right from the strategic aspect of rolling the very commercial project that a supplier might like to do right through to the very hardest to reach areas where people are already disadvantaged at this stage. So we need to really raise that bar to say that it's those people that are suffering with a disadvantage at the moment and those people that are actually, we need to get the message, get this technology to that is really the most important area. Um, and that's the, that's the kind of the joining up that we need to do. So we've got this very strategic aspect down to a, a local community driven uh, aspiration. And we're, we're really committed in this project to do that. Um, we've got a local community engagement officer which is going to be working on the project throughout its entirety to actually work with the local communities to drive this message home. And that's really why this message and this group has been set up today so that we can have a conversation with you about how important is this and what do we do to tackle it and what are your questions and how do we address them. So that's largely everything for me from a strategic perspective. Um, I'll, I'll be taking a chair at the side and joining in with the, the participation for the rest of the session. And I'll just hand you over to Lauren Kelly, who can talk you through a bit of what we've been doing about our community engagement, uh, community champions.